Previously on Paranormal Site, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. I can't look at any of the stuff. Not even the bird anymore. I don't give a fuck about all these things. I don't give a shit about this fax machine. She's like, what the fuck are you doing next to me? Hello? And now back to Paranormal Site. 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 Back with some more Paranormal Sight, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. When we last left off, we had a tense confrontation between uh, Ayame and Harue, and it was honestly pretty cool. So even them both sort of like seemingly feel each other out, right? Trying to figure out what the other person's like trigger is for their curse stone. Got some real good like mind games happening there. And you know what's actually even cooler? You guys pointed out this out to me. I, I did not notice this. If you listen really closely, after Haraway sort of gives off what her curse stone's trigger is by asking her if she has a lighter on her, or, you know, or anything, you can actually hear Ayame drop the lighter on the ground, or like just it's it's very slight, but you do hear like this little thud sound. And initially, after that, you see Richter's eyes are like empty inside. And I can't tell if he was reacting to what Haraway said, like, oh, I'm about to kill him. And that's what I thought he was reacting to. I think he actually might have noticed that she dropped the lighter. And he realized that himself. That I, I literally just screwed it up. I don't know. I feel like it could be either or. But regardless, that is an insanely cool detail. Oh, my God. It's so subtle. It's so subtle. And then we also had uh, Tetsuo and the gang sort of meet up and pool together all of the information they have acquired and sort of realizing that, yeah, Ayame has become a problem. We're going to have to do something about her. While well, they also try to piece together whether Ayame could also potentially be the mastermind of this whole thing. And I guess I've actually really enjoyed seeing the characters come together to share information like this. It's surprisingly rare in these kinds of stories. Like, a lot of times, characters just, like, stay in the dark and don't have, like, information that another group has, so they just end up kind of, like, getting themselves in situations that they wouldn't have been if they had the information that the other team had. I mean, granted, this was something that only happened because of us, right? Me, are doing, Nico Bizzle doing, but still cool to see. And they're still written in a way, too, that it doesn't feel like a rehash when they talk about it because they get we get the characters insights and they usually get, get and glean new information from each of those times that, that happens. So it's really helped to make those scenes feel important, you know? 
But yeah, so this is actually the last episode of this series. And I will say, damn it. <laughs> I am so sad that this is, this is it. This is all we're getting for now. It does feel so short, doesn't it? But I'm also gonna say that I, I don't think that this game's pacing is bad or that it necessarily went too fast. It's just that I enjoyed it so much that I wished it was longer, which I think is what anyone would want or hope that someone would feel when playing a game they made, you know? But that does sort of lead then to like, what can we expect potentially after this game, if there's anything more? And uh, one of you guys has something very interesting to say, and that was Usagi-chan, who last episode said, so apparently, when asked in an interview with Silicon Nera back at the end of March, director Ishiyama himself was very excited about the idea of Paranormal Sight becoming a series, and that it would likely become a reality with enough support. So if the game is successful enough, we will get a sequel. Well, you know what that means, Penguins. You know what you gotta go fucking do. Please go buy this game, please. Even if you watch this LP all the way from beginning to end, go buy this game, go play through yourself. You'll probably see things and notice things that, that you didn't the first time. Cause as we already are getting, there's so many freaking tiny details in this game. They're so cool that it would honestly take even multiple playthroughs to even see and, and realize what was happening. But also to help assure that in the future we get more of these games, because god damn it, dude, this this shit is so good. I am absolutely all in on this series, all right? If this game comes back in any form, and honestly, if Ishiyama gets any more freaking games under his belt, I'm gonna be there too, all right? I hope that the games that he did back in Japan that never got translated do eventually one day get translated, because I bet those are also quite good. I will say there is something actually at the end of this game that does also hint at potentially us getting more Paranormal Side games. I'm not going to spoil what that is, but there is a hope. But Usagi-chan, thank you so much for your uh, very hopeful comment. And here's the reason you are comment today. But please, guys, please help support this game. Show Square that we definitely want more games like this. They're so lovingly written. They have these amazing concepts. Give these guys even more budget to make something even crazier. Because Lord knows, after this shit, I am a paranormal side stan, all right? Which, without giving away too much, I mean, you might be slightly worried that, oh, what if, what if they mess up the ending here? I don't think you're going to need to worry too much about that. All I got to say is, fucking get ready, dude. Because I'm still thinking about this shit. And I'm going to let uh, freaking past Nico uh, show you what the hell I mean. Take it away, man! All right, well, Suzumi and Areo continuing their investigation to sign to me with the Yame Tono to get to the bomb at all. What will be the conclusion to the curses of the seven mysteries of Hanjo, to Seimen and Ashino's intertwined fates? The moment of truth and justice. Hey. How long has it been since we saw each other? Three years? How you been? I think the last time was when you came to see me after deciding to go to university. That wasn't because I wanted to see you. I just need money to pay my tuition. Ha. Huh. Not one to miss words, eh? You came alone, right? Yeah. It's just me. You make it sound like I'm handing over ransom money for hostages. I just don't want to get caught, okay? That <laughs> I went over there. Never thought I'd see the day you called the police. There's something I needed to see you about. Well, all right then. Got a lot to talk about. So let's go through things one by one. Wait, how do I return to the park at night? It's not even night time yet. Where's that last bird? The sun is starting to dip down to the horizon. This long, long day is about to end. And we don't have to worry about Nejima's threat anymore. But I sure didn't expect this to happen. At the bushes. Huh? What was that? So I can just move over there? What? Ah. What the hell are those idiots doing? Oh, he didn't actually know they were there? I told him not to come! Damn it! Shit. I don't want to know what will happen if they get found out. Whatever I do, I gotta keep from looking over there. <laughs> sure has changed over the past three years. Got more of a grown-up air about her. Hard to believe she's that same little girl who would get omelet all over her face when we took her out to eat. <sighs> Wait a minute. 
So how far back I have to go for a happy memory together? No wonder she hates me. She called the police asking for me by name, and demanded that I come meet her here alone. They asked if I wanted a team to set up a perimeter, but I had them stand down. Sure, she might make a run for it, but I don't want her panicking if she has a curse stone. Besides, I'm not trying to take her in by force. Wow, alright, uh... Lots of things here. About her curse stone. You... have a curse stone, don't you? I do. You wouldn't happen to feel like handing it over, would ya? The police will handle any damages the curse caused. Now, before you do any more wrong with it... I'm not giving it up. Of course not. Me being a curse bearer. Are you after my life? That's exactly what I'm here for. I didn't come to chat. We can talk all you want, but as soon as the condition for my curse is met, I'll use it. No hesitation. She's got a few now, right? It's like, so she's got the, the lighter one. I mean, I don't think I have a lighter on me. The one sided read, which is knowing all about where a person is, which actually, shouldn't I already fulfill that condition? She knows all about him, right? Reed lives in everything, I would think. And then the other one is it seemingly seems to be a lie, right? Which just seems a lot like what his is as well. Or do you have more than one? How many curse stones do you have? Three. Not that it matters. She means she's telling me the truth too, so I can't use mine on her either. Three, huh? Not that I think he would do it anyway. Unless I fucking did it. I'm not handing them over. About the talisman. Can I ask you one thing? Do you know anything about the talisman, Monsieur Shirishi had? Monsieur Shirishi? From the car crash you were in with that Namagaki guy. Oh, with Yutaro? Yeah, it was there. Yutaro? That sounds like... So you... You and him were... I mean... Eh, not really. He was kind of a boring guy. What? You're serious? But he said... Ah, getting off track, Mr. Susumi. The talisman. Get back to the talisman. <laughs> we should have never lied on him for this. Well, if you don't plan on seeing him again, it doesn't matter. With the hit-and-run case on top of everything, you're really in deep. Is that really what you wanted to talk about? Yeah. I mean, no. Tell me about the talisman. Did you take it from the scene? You mean this? That's... That's it. I picked it up at the scene of the crash. I didn't want to leave fingerprints behind. That's all. There's really no other reason. What's the big deal? Is it really that special? This old thing? I didn't want to leave fingerprints behind? I don't get it. What do you mean leave fingerprints behind? I guess when she went to go look at the body, she got fingerprints on it, so she was like, oh shit, so I had to take it? Yeah, it's real important. Would you mind giving it to me? Important? For what? For putting a stop to the curses of the seven mysteries. Oh, so that means if I give you the talisman, I won't be able to use the right. Then no way. I'm definitely keeping it. Damn it. Why'd you tell her? <laughs> Maybe fair. I think it might be that if he lies or she'll actually kill him, so. Oh, I screwed that one up. Mr. Susumi, you really can't do any better than that. Come on. The talisman. Will you give me the talisman? What? No way. I can't lose the right. Ugh. Well, she wants the right. Why are you willing to go so far with the right of resurrection? What do you want with it? Even if I told you, you wouldn't understand. You just call it stupid and dismiss the idea completely. Come on. I wouldn't do that. Maybe together we can think up a way for you to get what you want without resurrection. I want to bring Katsushika Hokusai back to life. <laughs> Hokusai? What? Hokusai the ukiyo artist? 
That Okasai? You want to bring him back to life? That'd be quite the feat, huh? That's... You... I heard you liked his art, but... Why would you do something so stupid? See? Gah. The only time I ever felt there was a place I belonged was when I was immersed in the dreamlike world of Ukiyo. Ukiyoe. Although, I'm sure you never noticed. Really? I had no idea. It saved me. Hokusai is the reason I'm still alive today. I didn't know you felt so hopeless. You would only realize it now, but it's too late. Feeling sorry won't do either of us any good. From the moment I heard about the Rite of Resurrection, I knew that was my destiny. If this is all I ever accomplish, I'll die happy. So you're really serious about this? About being taken hostage. I'm sorry I couldn't save you from Nejima. Are you hurt? And there it is. That's so like you. What? You're only mentioning that now? Shouldn't have been the first thing you asked me? <clears throat> well, I was just... You're not worried about me. All you care about is yourself. Yeah. You're right. I've been selfish, I know. Oh, interesting. But I probably could have asked her that right at the start, right? Oh, come on, Mr. Susumi. You could do better than that. He really screwed up there, huh? <laughs> Everyone back there judging him. I'm fine. I managed to get away somehow or other. Right. Yeah, I'm glad. Then I'll put this bluntly. Did you kill Nejima? And if I did, would you hide me from the police? Huh. Well, I... I don't know if I... That's what I thought. Your job is the only thing you really care about. Yes, I did it. You. I don't think he even knew I was a curse bearer. He brought me to those gardens, and I realized while he was talking to me that he fulfilled the condition of my curse. So, I just gave it a shot. I didn't think it would actually activate. So, there's no going back now. That's not true! You can still make things right! Before you make them worse! Then, let me say it another way. This is my chance, and I won't throw it away. Your chance? Did Nejima say anything to you? He said a lot of bad things about you, that's for sure. Yeah, no surprise there. So I said a lot of bad things about you back. I didn't want to be outdone. Harsh. In that sense, I felt just a little like he was my kindred spirit. No, no, no. Kindred spirit? What are you talking about? He's a dangerous criminal. But I'm a murderer now too, aren't I? Maybe we're not so different. <laughs> no, you're, you're different. Am I? Well, maybe not that different. <laughs> but at least you're honest. I know I haven't been the best father. But I wonder, of all the fathers in the world, are there any who wouldn't cover for their child if they committed a crime? How should I know? You're the detective here. You must have seen plenty of cases like that. Yeah, plenty of parents take the fall for their children or give them a place to hide. As a person, it's wrong, but maybe as a parent, it's the right thing to do? I don't know. But I think having a father like that would make it easier to go to him for advice if I did do something wrong. Maybe there's a sense of security in knowing that no matter what happened, you'd have at least one person on your side. I see. So that's what it would take to be on your side. I can't do that. That's okay. I wasn't really expecting you to. 
So Nejma really didn't tell you anything. Not really, no. How is she? Yasko, I mean. <laughs> yeah, there's a Yasko in this game too? Whoa, how about that? We only fight about that out about that now here at the end. <laughs> Just as I was playing Yaxa 4, there was a Yasko in this game. There's a Yasko in uh in this, in Paranormal Side as well. Mom, have I kept in touch with her? I've been on my own this whole time. I'm sure you've reached out to her though, haven't you? I did call her this morning, actually. Just to make sure she was safe. She's been running around all over the place looking for you. Huh. So she's fine in me. Did you contact her after I called the police to tell her that you'd heard from me? I did not. Tis, tis. Uh, well, I've heard you're into nightlife and staying out late these days. Didn't want her to worry more than she already has. Or she already was. You don't want to talk. I think I'll let you talk enough. Mind letting me have a turn? By all means. You're hiding something. You're hiding something from me, aren't you? Here we go. So this is the this is the condition, right? So we just go ahead and get the bad ending first. I'm not. I'm not. Wow, that's a bold declaration. Now then, let me tell you how my curse stone, the Taika of Suguru, works. What? My curse blunges to death anyone I find hiding something from me. Yep. So if you try to cover something up that I know is true, I'll be able to use my curse stone on you. With that in mind, can I ask you one more thing? Ah, I get it. Why well, you want to see me? Interesting, so that's like the same exact thing that his is, right? Kills by hanging one who tries to mislead the curse bearer with false statements. Then let me tell you one thing first. Yeah, the Evergreen Beach is a similar condition. I can use my curse on anyone who tells me a lie. What? How is that fair? And you use that curse on me? As an officer of the law, it's inexcusable. But as a parent with a duty to his child, I have no other choice. Are you threatening me? Do you really think it's enough to convince me to do as you say? I don't want to use it either. But for your sake, I suggest you try not to lie. Go ahead then. If I lie, then so be it. Okay. I'm gonna ask. If you try to hide it now, you really will die. Am I? Am I? Your real daughter. I'm just a baby you picked up to replace your stillborn, aren't I? And you could never bring yourself to tell me who my real parents were, so you just kept hiding it. Still too much of a coward to tell me, huh? You don't like the truth, so you won't admit it. That my real parent is the man I was just with. Ayame! Is that all you have to say? Then I only have one answer for you. You are, honestly and truly, our daughter. Nothing more. Nothing less. Even now? You're still trying to hide it? Why? Are you really that stupid? Gah! Ah! Ah! Huh! Boss! Boss! Why? Is your pride worth dying for? Ah! 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 Oh, fuck! Ah, oh, shit! Ah! I should have known. Why? Why go this far to hide it? Yami, listen. Huh? You are. How? Oh, shit. Yami, be proud. No matter what happens, you are our precious daughter. No way! How are you still alive? I don't know what this piece of shit 
Najma filled your head with. But you're not Shino. And you're not Ashino either. You're our daughter, Ayami Susumi. Ah, right. I guess it's Tono now. Well, that's fine too. Susumi, Tono, both will always be part of who you are. What? Why are you doing this? That's not true. The curse proves that it's not. Sure. You probably don't have many memories of us playing together. And I did leave everything at home to your mom. And I was barely ever there for you. Even so, when I was working, no matter how grisly a crime scene I was at, all I ever wanted was for you to grow up to be happy. That's it. Why? Why say all this now? So, do one last thing for me. I want you to tell me the truth, too. And if you lie to me now, I'm taking you with me. Stop! I can't! The mastermind behind all of this. The one who awakened the curses of the seven mysteries in order to use the right. Was it you? Was it? No. No. I wouldn't even know how to do that. And picking up Monsieur Sherry Ishii's talisman was just coincidence, right? Huh? Yeah, I already told you that. Ah, good. Hearing that, I can rest easy. You're nothing like Nijima. You can stand on your own two legs. You can keep living without escaping into a fantasy. You can hate me. You can dream all the crazy dreams you want. Just don't ever stop trying to do good. You're a victim of your curse, too. It's not too late to atone for the hidden run, for using the curse. Don't run away. You can still make things right. I know you can, because you're my daughter. And after that, just live the best life that you can. Dad! <sighs> Boss! Boss! That day at 6.18 p.m., Ayami Tono was taken into custody. Tatsuo Susumi's death was confirmed at the same time. The five cursed stones possessed by Susumi, as well as the three given up by Ayame, lost their curse bearers. This temporarily extinguished their spare power, allowing Miyu Kurosuzu to obtain them and steal them away without difficulty. The yin talisman possessed by Ayame Tono was recovered and trusted to Miyu Kurosuzu as well. Thus, any massacre that could potentially be caused by this iteration of the curses was prevented before it could ever happen. Or so it seemed. Oh, now, huh? This is, is this the, uh, I wonder if this is actually the true side. I think this is probably isn't, but I don't know. Damn, that was, that was really powerful, though. I, I feel like that might be like Tetsuo's ending. I think it will kind of depend whether the, uh, w whether I get like a new, uh, scenario after this, or if this is like actually counted as an ending. 
Um, so anyway, the Taiga Suguru. There was once a daimyo from Harosaki Domain in Suguru who built a residence in Midoricho on a large piece of land. On this estate was an almost eight meter tall tower that served as a lookout for fires. Only a Disney of firefighter was allowed to use the large drum that resided atop the tower in the event of a fire. While well, most towers used wooden blocks to sound the fire alarm, for some reason this residence was permitted to use drums. The residence and its special privileges led to much speculation and gossip among the townsfolk. Kills by bludgeoning one who was discovered to be hiding something from the curse bearer. The deep sound of drums once more reverberates through the night air. How long has it been since we started hearing them each day? Could it be coming from the Daimyo's residence? I've heard they have a drum in their fire watchtower instead of wooden clackers, but I don't see a fire. So why are they sounding the drum? Then one morning a body was found. Isn't that old man Kanzo, the Uki Oe painter? He lived nearby, but had been down and out for years. Despite his best efforts to sell his works, every now and then his granddaughter would visit and he would teach her to paint. It was the old man's only pleasure. One day his granddaughter told him about her dreams, curses, souls, resurrections, Hearing her tale, the old man was gripped by a sudden zeal and began to paint with great fervor. His work quickly became famous, enchanting all those who viewed the strange imagery. Even the daimyo had taken notice. What could possibly have happened? The people whispered amongst each other. It looked almost as if he had been beaten like a drum. What the fuck? So he ended up taking her dreams and making it into uh, his art. Um, Alright, we already read this one. This is the super fucked up one. So yeah, like, they cut off an arm and a leg of, like, a lover. Kills by dismember one whose face, address, name, age, occupation, and location are all known by the curse bearer. Yes, the one- This one with the freaky face! Okoma was a lovely woman. She was spirited, worked hard, and lived a, a frugal yet pleasant life. Until her husband hanged himself. My husband, a swindler? Who would believe such a thing? Okoma was determined to clear her husband's name. That is when she met Tomezo, a man that was a stranger to these parts. This man must be one of Damio's, the Damio's spies. It appears that after my husband, I will be next. So be it. But what is he hunting for? Akoma, putting on the airs of a woman mourning her husband, went to the bridge night, nightly to seek information from Tomezo. She soon discovered that she was right, and that her husband had been deceived. Akoma decided to bring her newfound knowledge to the Damio, much to Tomezo's alarm. Angered at having been misled, he confronted her on the bridge, but Akoma would not listen. She cursed him, calling him vile names, and eventually his patience had worn thin. Blood splattered everywhere, and by the time he returned to his senses, it was already too late. He looked over at the bridge into the river of blood below and saw the corpse of a woman missing both an arm and a leg. Ugh. Junior 8 p.m. Oh shit, maybe not. Then maybe this is actually the, the way we're supposed to go. Sorry for keeping you out so late, Mio. I can't take my mind off the curse bear, who was never found. Oh, it's no problem for me. I usually work at night anyway. Did you see Yako home safely? Yep. We sent her home in a patrol car earlier. Apparently she put up quite a fuss. Saying she wanted to see things through to the end. Oh man, is it is it is it actually gonna be canonical then that Tetsuo has to bite the bite the dust? Ah, oh, but I loved him! He's so he was awesome! He was easily my favorite character to voice in this game. Thank you. The face of shadows was starting to take effect, so it would have been dangerous. Oh, uh, here we go. All right, now for the final burb. There it is. Behold, the mocking burb, Budgie Mary. <laughs> Yay, we did it. We've acquired all burbs. Huzzah. 8 p.m. with no one around. This place is sound as the grave. I don't want us to go out at night in these parts after everything that's happened over the past two days. We didn't already get Tessa's ending, did we? I don't know. I don't think we did. Uh, I think the the true mastermind is Yoko. That's that's what's gonna happen, and that's who's gonna like come out. I think here at the end. Oh. Huh? What's wrong? Next is Detective Areo. What? What? I can't get my mind off the remaining curse stone, the Whispering Canal, and who the mastermind is. But we have to deal with that thing before I can worry about any of that. How's it going with the two talismans? Have you figured out the location of the record of Fate's Yun Scroll? I have, more or less. When I combined the contents of the two talismans, they formed a seal which could be, un could be undone. The things inside the talisman that looked like scraps of wood were actually a tiny scroll kept folded up by the seal. Who'd have thought the talismans actually contained the scroll itself? 
So that's the in scroll then. What's it say? Well, there's one more seal we have to undo to open the scroll. It's giving me some trouble. So I was actually hoping you could help me out. Okay, unlocking the seal. Got it. Sure thing. I don't know what I'll be able to do, but let me at it. Oh, wow. I didn't expect you to be so eager to help. It's oddly reassuring. Okay, let's see. It's not going to be that he's got like the... Ins he's like the actual uh, descendant of Ashino or some... Or Ashino or some shit, right? But I don't think he's done... I don't think so, because... Well, I don't know, actually. There are five seals holding the scroll shut. I think we have to remove them in the correct order. Each seal has a different design. A carp, a light, a beech leaf, a taiko drum, and a reed. Remove the five seals in the right order. Okay. If we get it wrong, is it gonna, you know, go boom? Huh? No, we'll just have to try again. I tested it once already. Ah, oh, you already try yourself. So, so brave. I think it's devised so that the seal can only be undone if the curses for the right have already been unleashed. And I think there's a hint to opening it, hidden in something related to the curses. Hmm. Just let me know when you're ready. Hmm. Oh. It's like she's you noticing know, just from looking at me. Having a girl like her react to me as if she's seen something significant is kind of terrifying. He actually, actually commented on it too. Actually, hold on a second. Oh, no, I know what she's commenting on. She's commenting on me, me the player. She's commenting on Nico B, Spirit or whatever. She's saying next Detective Arreo that I'm inside of him right now because I am inside of him. I have seemingly been possessing him. Oh, wait. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be an Ashino or some shit, am I? <laughs> Maybe uh, are all of us Ashino? Or descendants of Ashino or something? Like everybody? That'd be some crazy bullshit. Like everybody that I've managed to control? Because I can't control everybody in the story, right? Ooh. I can't leave. Damn it. I can't control Mio. I can't control like Nejima or Ayame. But I don't know. I mean, I haven't controlled Oreo till literally this moment here. Yes, it makes sense for such an important document to be sealed so tight. Might help to talk things over with Mia if I get stuck. So what what are my options here? If you move in the correct order, each has a design. A carp, a light, a beech leaf, a taiko drum, and a reed. So they all res you know, are all related to the the curses here. But how do I know which order they go in? So the carp is gonna be the whispering canal, more than likely. Actually, let me, let me just look at all these. Yeah, whispering canal. The beckoning light, the evergreen beach, the one-sided reed, and a drum would be the Taiko Suguru. Maybe the order that we found all these out or something? Move the five seals in the correct order. Uh, I'm gonna go carp, beach, light, reed, Taiko drum. Hmm, I don't think that was right. No, nope. oh, good. Damn it. I would like to be able to do this without having to consult her. Get a get a cheat here. Maybe this. Beach light. Taiko Reed. No. I think it's devised so the seal can only be undone if the curses for the right have already been unleashed. So it makes the order that they were used. But none of the ones that we have have been used. Oh actually no. Technically Shogo died to that. And that has been used. So hold on. In the order they've been used. So this ha this was seemingly the first thing to be used. Um, I never used the beech leaf though. And the light was never used either. The taiko drum uh, was used. So it made this. The reed. Because some people did die from that. The beech leaf never got used. And I don't think the seal light seal did either. The taiko drum. And then... Light. Beach? No. Fine! I'll get a hint from you. I won't explode or anything, so you might as well give it a try. I see. Okay. I tried. Do you recognize any of the things on these seals? They look sort of familiar. Maybe there's something in our files. I see. Okay! 
I mean, I, I recognize it. I'm just trying to figure out maybe something specifically with their their story, their stories here. Funny thing is, this isn't, isn't even all the characters that I could control here, right? Like, this doesn't include Yako's Curse Stone or Haraway's. I have no idea. I feel like there'd be a lot of things here. Mio, help me. Oh, this feels like some of the Curse Stone designs. I know that. Must be there's some order of the seven mysteries of Haunter that correspond to them. I see. Okay. Okay, I already know that. So it was applied during the Edo period. So it probably has to do with the with events that took place around them. Around then. Oh. Oh, I have to figure out the event the order that these events happened. How the hell am I supposed to know that though? I think it's gonna tie to the Hanjo incident, right? Well, Hanjo was filled with a samurai residence, spies, uh, silver carts, uh fortunate incident occurred in which a man attacked a woman in about a fury. How the hell am I supposed to know that? They all seem so disconnected from each other. Oh! 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 Toki loved fishing with her father, Jinkichi, more than anything. And Jinkichi is... It's this guy, the Evergreen Beach. Oh my god! No, they are connected. It's funny, because the, the thing is, that it's like, it's here, but it's hard to keep track of, because the game isn't, like, really giving you, like, files for the names of all the characters here, right? So her father was Jinkichi. So she... Uh, her father disappeared. Oh, uh, okay. So we, it is. We have to figure out the order of the events here. So Toki's mother went to go look for him. Is her, was the mother also one of these potentially? Let's see. What about the beckoning light? Memories of a young, the young couple and their daughter, but he has lost everything. He had repaid the kindness shown to him with e with evil. The regret gnaws at him now. It is too un late to undo it. His mind turns to the own Miyoji woman. It was all her doing. Now the blame lay with him and it was his, in, in his inexperience. He foolishly involved himself with the forbidden, forbidden, inviting evil into his life. I should have left the light, right of resurrection well enough alone. God, this is such a cool final puzzle. Oh my god, this is like some like mist shit. Honestly, it's like you gotta go in here, piece this, this shit together, and figure out the order that these events happened. So obviously, the uh, this one happened before the uh, the Whispering Canal. Oh, oh my god. Okay, I get, I'm seeing it. This is, this, wow, this is crazy. So yes, she, she is the wife of Jinkichi until her husband hanged himself. Okay, so this also happens before the Whispering Canal and the Taiko Suguru happened, uh, or no, the Evergreen Beach happens before hers. He deceived us with his so-called Rite of Resurrection. Oh, and that's the, the Rite of Resurrection came from him. He, sp he spread the rumors, right? One day his granddaughter told him of, about her dreams, curses, souls, resurrections, hearing her tell the old man was gripped by a sudden zeal. So he's the one that set this shit into motion. So I think it's gonna be him. Okay. And then I think it's, all right, I think I might have it. Okay, so Taiko Suguru, the, uh, the beach light, Jinkichi dies, then she dies, and then the little girl dies, and then finally the lingering spirit of like, it was all because of that shit, right? Like, what, what, what is the final thing for the beckoning light? Fig silhouette, uh, framed by silvery moonlight near the bridge as a man hunched over near death with regret carved on his face. Visions of the past flashed through his mind. Memories of the young couple and their daughter, but he has lost everything. He had repaid the kindness shown to him with evil. His mind turns to the Omiyoji woman. It was all her doing. I think the mind of the man's life begins to fade as the regret or anger washed over him. If only had accomplished it in the end. Alas, it's too late for that now. I'm prepared for hell. Perhaps in another life I can fulfill my dreams. Even if this body perishes, I can atone for my sins. Uh, is it the end or the beginning? That's right, though. Okay, it is. It is. That might be... Okay. So who's the spirit at the end there? Is this Saman? It might be. We got it right. It's open. At long last, after 10 attempts, you finally figured it out! <laughs> oh, you actually kept track of how many I did! Shut up, Mio! I realized that since there was only 120 possible combinations, I was about to get it eventually! <laughs> now we can finally read what's written inside. Let's see. Hey, I figured it out, okay? Mostly. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, Record of Fates Yin Scroll. It said that Seiman Tsuchi Mikado, author of the Record of Fates, wrote the Yin Scroll because he feared that the descendants of those involved in the Hanju incident might become cursed and used in the collection of soul dregs for the Rite of Resurrection. The existence of the Yin Scroll is indicated in the postscript add to the Record of Fates. 
but its whereabouts are currently unknown, is believed to have been inherited by a descendant of Saman. The text has been preserved in the form of two talisman held by Hajime Yoshimi and Mishio Shiraishi. It contains a full account of the Hanjo incident, and the following is written in Saman's hand. I bequeath this scroll to future generations to be used in the event that calamity should arise from this grievous incident. Those who seek to forestall disaster must gather these three items in one place to cast my rite of cleansing and expel all rituals and curses in full. My soul, that is my curse echo. My body, that is a living continuation of my bloodline. My spirit, and that is my own consciousness. And I guess those are stored in those things there, maybe? No, 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 it's just, th th this is what the text is. This is what the text is. So we need these three things. His curse echo, a living continuation of my bloodline, and my own consciousness. What? Maybe we're Saman then. Maybe that's us. Well, here we go. The Hanjo Incident. During the Edo period, a chain of events that occurred around a certain resurrection spell became the basis for the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. This is a story that takes place in the late Edo period. There was once a family that lived in a row house in Hanjo. The family consisted of an Itsuke craftsman named Jinkichi, his wife Koma, and their daughter Toki. They enjoyed a poor but happy existence. One day they took in a man by the name of... Who claimed to be a... Oh. One day they took in a man by the name of blank. Oh. It's me. I'm Saman. My spirit is Saman. By the name of blank. It's gonna be my name, right? I am the spirit. That's my consciousness or whatever the fuck. Or the soul or whatever the hell. Who claimed to be Shimoji, he was on the run, having barely escaped with his life from something or another, and wound up at Hanjo. Tough circumstances had left him sick and destitute. Jinkichi felt sorry for the man and decided to shelter him. The stranger was deeply grateful for the kindness and care of Jinkichi's family, as without it, it would have he, he would have surely died, and told them thusly on the day of his departure, I want to give you my thanks, but unfortunately I have nothing of value. He paused and asked, is there anyone you want to bring back to life? It turned out that the man's true name was Tsuchimikado Seiman, a descendant of renowned Onmyoji. Oh. But the name of... So that's his real name. This is going to be his fake name. And the fake name is going to be my name, right? I fucking bet. A descendant of renowned Onmyoji. And he had been researching the fabled rite of resurrection. For his crime in unearthing this forbidden rite, he was chased out by his family. But he wrote down everything about the spell in a book he named the Record of Fates while on the run. Whoever sought to perform the rite would need to kill people and gather their soul dregs. Saman had only researched the right out of the spirit of in inquiry, but thought himself willing to use the right if it was for the sake of Jinkichi's family. However, Jinkichi shook his head. Sacrificing someone is unthinkable. We didn't help you because we wanted something returned, so you owe us nothing, he said. Decline the unbelievable offer. Saman bowed his head in gratitude countless times at those words and left their house. In the same area, there lived an ukiyo-e artist known as Old Man Kanzo, his art didn't sell much, but he often looked after Toki while Jinkichi and Koma were out working. Oh my god. Young Toki heard Samus talk about the Rite of Resurrection, but being too young to comprehend it, regaled it to Old Man Kanzo as a story of fiction. Old Man Kanzo, inspired by the story and filled with renewed vigor, put his heart and soul into his next painting. The piece, centered around the theme of resurrection, became an instant hit in town. Jinkichi, being a shrewd businessman, saw an opportunity and jumped on the bandwagon by carving Nats uh, Natsuke connected to Old Man Kanzo's ukiyo-e. He made up stories about Netsuke, telling the people that their blessings were connected to resurrection and his business rapidly flourished. That man unknowingly left us a wonderful gift, thought Jinkichi and his family, but they were unaware of the tragedy that would soon unfold. Before long, word of old man Kanzo's wonderful ukiyo-e reached the ears of the local daimyo, and he was summoned to the Lord's residence. But what awaited him was not praise, but cruel torture at the hands of Ashino, a female omiyoji who was in pursuit of Saman. It was her pressured Saman into researching the Rite of Resurrection, which she secretly planned to use to preserve her beauty for all eternity. Oh, and she's the, and, ah, uh, yeah, and she's, she's the one that is the legs, right? The foot washing uh, mansion. And she took advantage of the fact that the daimyo's heart was weak and frail following the loss of his family, manipulated him into capturing old man Kanzo, the source of the recent rumors about resurrection. Hold on a second. Is the daimyo like, Oh, oh, a man attacked a woman in a bout of fury. He's the ever burning lantern is is Tomezo. He's the one that attacked this woman and then killed himself and became a spirit. The haunting clappers are right. Her. It must be the work of that vixen that appeared and suddenly enchanted my lord. That witch, those hauntingly cold eyes 
had my lord dancing in the palm of her hand. Perhaps I was taken in by her. How many innocent people did I lure under in on her orders? This must be karma. This is referring to to the woman, right? To Ashino. That uh then manipulated the daimyo. So his home is burning to the ground. I'm not exactly sure that maybe I'll get that in the story here. And this is this is literally the spirit of Saman. I think I am Am I the beckoning light? I don't know about the fool's procession though. This one doesn't seem connected. But the woman who sang at the top of the tower and had the mask lewd her face? That one, I'm not exactly sure about the connection. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and continue. Ashino took advantage of the fact that Daimyo's heart was weak and frail following the loss of his family and manipulated him to capturing old man Kanzo, the source of the recent rumors about resurrection. Tell me what you heard of, of the rite of resurrection, Ashino demanded. As the brutal beings continued, it was said that the eerie sound of the beatings rang out like the beating of a taiko drum that night after night reaching even the watchtower of the Tsuguru residence, okay? That's, that's where the attack of Tsuguru came from. In the end, Ashino's cruel torture secured her the information on Jinkichi's family and the existence of the Record of Fates. The daimyo sent his chief retainer to bring in Jinkichi, and the torture resumed afresh with the new captive. This time, she intended to obtain the whereabouts of Seiman and the location of the Record of Fates. Jinkichi didn't know where Seiman went, but even if he did, he had no intention of telling and stubbornly kept his mouth shut. The torture was pushed too far, and Jinkichi was unintentionally killed before he spoke a word. The daimyo had Jinkichi's corpse hang from a beech tree and declared that, unable to bear the guilt of crime and deceiving the masses with false rumors of resurrection, Jinkichi had committed suicide. This too was all part of Ashino's plan to send a message to the common folk, especially the increasing number of those who sought out the right for themselves. Oh, well, there you go. Here's what happened to Jinkichi spread and people lost interest in the rite, wondering if the, if the stories of resurrection were all but a lie. But rumors that the daimyo's word was perhaps not all that truthful spread quickly when a dancer claimed to have witnessed the chief retainer's cold-blooded handiwork firsthand, and Hanjo fell into unrest once more. The chief retainer which rested the girl proposed a deal to put a stop to the rumors. The girl was to say she wanted attention and retract, and retract her story by saying it was entirely made up. In exchange, she would be given a most wondrous stage to perform on. Oh, but when the day, there it is, there it is. In exchange, she would be given the most wondrous stage to perform. When the day came, she was suffocated by the mask prepared for the performance. Unbeknownst to her, the mask had been covered in glue as part of the plan to kill and silence her. <laughs> that is a, that's a pretty elaborate way to go about it, I must say. Koma never believed for a moment that her husband, Jinkichi, had committed suicide. She was certain someone was behind his death and asked around persistently for the names, addresses, and any other information she could find on people with connections to the daimyo. Hey, there you go. And that's where, why that's the specification for hers. The chief retainer would not allow things to escalate any further and had Tamezo, a ronin who once served as a spy, go after her. However, she turned the table on him, shouting, it was you who killed my husband, wasn't it? Confronted with the accusation, Tamezo flew into a blind rage and cut Como down in broad daylight. In order to take responsibility for his failure by committing seppuku, he exposed the daimyo's plot as he dismembered, disemboweled himself by the lantern of the soba card he used to give coded signals. So two two of them right there, right? With both her parents gone through means unbeknownst to her, Toki found herself to be all alone. One day late at night, she went searching for her parents and met her doom falling into a canal where she drowned. Meanwhile, the chief retainer had made no headway whatsoever in finding Seiman's whereabouts, and an incensed Ashino decided to set fire to his residence, burning him alive, and then there's that one right there. In truth, all those connected to these events thus far were cursed by Ashino so that their souls were churn into soul dregs upon death, which she had been collecting. All she needed to perform the right now was to get her hands on the record of fates. Since saying that there was something serious at work behind the recent string of strange events in Hanjo, Seiman returned to find he was too late. He broke down in tears when he learned of the unfortunate and unnatural deaths of Jinkichi's family had met. Seiman realized it was the handiwork of Ashino when he found their soul dregs had been collected and decided he had to prevent any further sacrifices from happening by confronting her on Honji Bridge. And yes, and what ensued was a fierce battle of spells that endured till the break of dawn. Though those who did not know any better only saw what they believed to be the eerie flashes and supernatural orbs of light. At the end of the long battle, Ashino defeated Seiman and obtained the record of fates. But he had placed a curse upon her foot. Ashino dragged her foot, corrupted and horribly inflamed, and sought refuge at the nearby residence of a retainer and angrily demanded they wash her foot. Ashino died then and there, filled with agony, and her foot cursed and rotten. Seiman too, having sustained serious wounds during the fight, died that day on Hanji Bridge, still filled with regret. However, Seiman came back to life, knowing that there would be enough soul dregs in place during their confrontation. He prepared a spell that would reactivate the Rite of Resurrection upon his passing. 
Feeling that his curiosity was responsible for the tra terrible tragedy that had unfolded, he was left with a keen understanding of why the rite of resurrection was forbidden and became determined to seal it away. Indeed, the reason he'd resurrected himself was for that very purpose. However, he did not know what had become of the Record of Fates. With nothing to seal away, he instead used his remaining soul dregs to turn nine of the Natsuke made by Jinkichi into ritual implements to be sealed away in Hanjo. He placed a spell so that should someone try to activate the Rite of Resurrection again, all nine pieces will awaken at once. And to pass the whole truth of these events to the future generations, he wrote everything down in the Record of Fate's Yin Scroll and passed it down to his descendants. All nine pieces will awaken if the Rite of Resurrection... It try to activate the Rite of Resurrection again? What does that mean? Like, they're just like activate and kill everybody? But seemingly the Rite of Resurrection did work in some of those endings, right? Meanwhile, the townspeople kept silent about the incidents out of fear of being cursed. However, these occurrences were so strange that gossip about it couldn't truly be contained. Over time, the details became more and more vague as the stories grew into legends, and that is how they came to be called the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Wow, so fucking cool, dude. That's so fucking cool. I think it's me. I think my spirit is Saman. Hmm, I see. What does it say? First is a detailed account of the tragedy surrounding the Rite of Resurrection that occurred in Hanjo back in the Edo period. The whole story of what we call the Hanjo Incident is laid out clearly. That incident was the origin of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo and their curses, right? Yes. The resentment of the victims of the incident turned into curses, which are the curse echoes. The contents are organized like an answer sheet, so it doesn't just give the information we need. Ah. Is there anything else? Yes. Here's what we've been looking for. I bequeath this scroll to future generations to be used in the event that calamity should arise from this grievous incident, it says. Whoa, he foresaw all of this happening? And it continues. Those who seek to forestall disaster must gather these three items in one place to cast my rite of cleansing and expel all rituals and curses in full. So no, I mean, it's if the rite of resurrection is activated, then all nine stones will be activated too, which makes me wonder like, was there something else that happened afterwards? I don't I don't know. Or maybe it just means that whoever cast it will die regardless. Maybe that's what we saw at the end there with with Shogo. He filled up the Rite of Resurrection and then just like died instantly because it activated and killed him. But the Rite of Cleansing, that's what is the actual true goal. My soul, that is my curse echo. My body, that is a living continuation of my bloodline. My mind, that is my own consciousness. Oh, okay. His curse echo, that's the beckoning light. My body, a living continuation of my bloodline. I don't know. I don't know about that. My consciousness, that's gonna be me. That's gonna be me, the spirit, Nico Bizzle, the Dino Sizzle. The bloodline, maybe, I mean, I think Yoko is gonna be the one that set this shit into motion. And I think it's, but I think she's gonna be the descendant of Ashino, right? At least I think. Unless, unless that was still, Susumi's daughter. I don't think so. Wow. So if we gather these three things in one place, Samus' right of cleansing will activate and completely negate the curses and the right of resurrection. Ooh, that's it. That's exactly what we need. The three things are Samus' soul, body, and mind. It says that the soul is Samus' curse echo. His curse echo. So Samus himself is a part of the seven mysteries. That you mentioned it, Mr. Aishi says something along those lines before. There's another hit written here. My curse echo holds my curse. My curse brings ruin to curse bearers. Yeah. What kind of hit is that? Maybe it'll make more sense as we keep looking. But will the curse echo still appear if the curse bearer is already gone? Next, the body is a descendant of Samen's, Samen's it seems. Was he a shimmy or a relative of Samen? Oh. He and Monsieur Shereishi, who had the other talisman. <sighs> Both of them had already passed by the time this iteration of the curse was unleashed. Damn, that's true. What are we gonna do? His bloodline was so split up. There have to be others. Oh, there's another note here too. Where? Is another hint? As for the body, seek not only one who bears my blood, but one with strong spirit sense. Such an individual will be able, if a spirit attempts to possess them, to instead take control of that spirit themselves. What? So it says. 
is this gonna be some crazy bullshit now where I'm gonna hop back in time to like back to Shogo and Shogo's gonna be the one to like do all this shit? Do we know of anyone like that? I can't think of anyone. Let's move on for now. Next is the mind. What's the difference between the mind and the soul? Um, in paranormal theory, it says that humans are made up of soul, body, and mind. The mind is essentially thought to be part of the spirit that makes up for one's consciousness, or one's self. It's like driving. The body is the car, the soul is the control system, and the mind is the driver. Hmm, I see. I think that makes sense. So, is there a hint for finding this one, too? Well, let's see. There's this. Should the rite of resurrection be activated elsewhere, so too shall my mind be awakened there. Oh. Sam had tried to seal away the rite of resurrection, but before he could, Ashino stole the record of fates. So as a countermeasure to the rite being activated, he made it so that his mind would be released from the seal. Okay, but what does that actually mean? What it means is, Sam's mind awoke the night the rite was activated, it must be possessing someone out there right now. Uh, oh, I think it is me, right? So my mind would still be out there. I thought that, I mean, the, the rite of resurrection hasn't, I, I didn't think it had started, but I guess it kind of has because that's what, that's what started all these, put all these curses out here, essentially. But by starting that story, that's what began all of this. So right now. What? So we must have to get that person together with everything else. All right. So we have to find the curse echo, the descendant, and the person possessed by Samen. Then we just get them together in one place and we'll be good to go. All right, but there is one thing. The second and third ones could both be the same person. Oh, but who could that be? If it's like how Michio lost her memories when she was possessing Yako, Samen's consciousness might not be aware of who it really is. Oh. She looks directly at me. Don't you look at me, Mio. So if he learned the truth, would he start to act of his own accord? Oh, then that person could already be... Oh, hold on a second. Someone's coming this way. Uh-oh. Huh? I think this is about to end badly. I think, I think this is the case. I think now... At the... Oh, my God. I think I see how this shit's gonna go, dude. I think I see how this shit... So, I know who's coming over here right now. I know who's coming over here right now. The actual mastermind. It's gonna be Yoko. And she's gonna fucking kill them here, right? Or, or just do some shit. And then, I'm gonna go back to the beginning. Before all this shit happened, I'm gonna take Shogo, who had strong spiritual power. We put, we mentioned that earlier, and I was wondering, like, why is that, it seems kind of weird to say this after the fact so much, right? I'm gonna go back at the moment he's with Yoko as well. And we're have like one final like fucking moment. That conference with Samen and uh Ashino. That's so fucking cool, dude. I bet that's how it's just gonna go. Anyway, let's go ahead and die. Oh boy, here we I like it. You can also tell from the text color, right? Excuse me, can I interrupt for just a moment? Um, who might you be? Would you buy this empty can of juice I just finished drinking for 10,000 yen? Huh? I didn't even throw in these bones from some fried chicken. You can't beat a deal like this. Um, I, uh, I don't really want them. Don't say that. Come on, they're delicious. Actually, I thought I might have a picnic right here. Will you join me? Sorry, um, I don't understand. What should we do? Well, it's not like we need this exact spot. We can't do anything with other people around. Let's just move somewhere else. Um, sorry. We're in the middle of something, so we'll just be on our way. Uh-oh. No! Don't walk away from her! What? Uh! 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 It hurts! Uh! This... This is a curse! Demon Yoko! Wow. Wow, some crazy bullshit. Yep, I fucking knew it, dude. It's starting to come together for me now. 
Fucking Yoko is a demon all along. That crazy bitch. So whose ending is this? Yoko's ending? Rhea's ending? Oh. Back to- Yep. You have my heartfelt thanks for all your hard work thus far. This brings the story of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo to a close. And who could have foreseen such a conclusion? Unfortunately, it seems the so-called mastermind was one step ahead of you. She remains hidden, leaving behind no evidence. Perhaps there truly is no way to stop her. However, should you find that this conclusion is not to your liking, by all means, please, pursue a different path. You have done it once before, so I'm sure you already know how. With that, I shall be taking my leave. I have been your humble storyteller. Good night. Oh no, that's just the end of that. There actually is nothing left there. I, I thought there actually would be another potential thing with Tetsuo here. But that means I'm actually going to go back. All the way back. Is it actually going to tell me? Oh my god, it doesn't, dude. It doesn't give me a highlighted thing here. That's amazing. This game is fucking incredible, dude. Oh my god. This game is fucking amazing. Holy shit, dude. This might be one of the best fucking stories I've ever played. This might be one of the coolest fucking visual novel things I've ever played. This includes Dongaropa. This includes fucking Steins Gate. This includes Ace Attorney. Like, even the Grey Ace... I mean, fucking Grey Ace Attorney 2 is incredible. And, and the whole thing is amazing. But this is like... This is like one of the most smartly written, like, fucking stories. It's so tight. It's such a tightly written story. And it makes you feel like a fucking genius. Oh my god, dude. I've got such a I've got such a fucking wave of dopamine and exuberance from this shit of like piecing this crap together. <sighs> so we got to go back. Where's the moment? So what is the moment? We have to get we have to find the exact moment. So what they're possessing him. That's me. I'm Samen. Might not be aware who it really is. All right. That, that, I'm sorry. That's me. The so possessing someone right now uh, should be activated elsewhere to where my mind should be awakened. Wait, 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 wait. The thing is, we did that night, right? We did the at the start of the game see the curse echo. That was the uh, the beckoning light. I don't know what it was doing there. I don't actually know what it was doing there. But if I do that, the body in my in my consciousness. God, do I go back to when she was fucking dead? Hold on. Something's happening to Yoko. Now I'm heading back here. What the hell? It feels like the air just changed. Something's got Ryoko worked up. Okay. Oh my god. Wait. What if... What if I had the beckoning light the whole time? Because what, what happens... I press the left trigger, right? I press the left trigger at the start... And I, did I, did I, is Shogo the original use, the one that has the beckoning light or something? But then how does it get to fucking where Mayu is? But I don't notice it, right? Right here, press. Something happened. Yoko? Okay. Dead? Hmm. So talking with him, there's the there's the link the, the beckoning light. This looks like a light flowing in midair. It gets closer. Touch it. Huh? <gasps> oh my god. Am I supposed to touch it? Yes, do it. <gasps> oh, oh, my God. It is. It is following after her fucking... After getting her killed. 
after she dies. I wonder if, does that mean I'm not gonna hear from her about any of this though? Cause I wanna get like her side and shit, you know? I'm gonna hear her say some, some dank crap. Cleansing. When the body, soul, and mind of Seimen Tsuchi Mikado have all been brought together, the rite of cleansing is activated, dispelling all rituals and curses that have previously been performed. Oh! Dispelling all of them, so... Oh! She's gonna come back to life, isn't she? Oh my god! And I'm back to fucking Shogo again. It, so, like, what a, what a cool fucking idea. At the start of the game, you, you play as this dude and you think he's significant and it seemingly isn't and then dies right at the start. You switch to a bunch of other people, especially solve this grand epic mystery. And you're like, oh, I guess that guy who's like on the front, is seemingly at the front and is like the main protagonist, isn't really at all. And then you fucking go back to him at the very end of the story. So, oh my God. Glad I noticed that, that ghost over there. This actually would be kind of hard if I, had, if I hadn't actually saw that over there or, or wimp. Actually, I didn't even notice it the first time. Going back and seeing it the first time, right? Essentially, because I actually went back and actually stumbled across that, that actually helped me a lot because otherwise I would have been really screwed here. My, my. Finally, you have arrived at this juncture. I expected no less from you. That would mean that you have managed to bring everything to light. Though there is the possibility that you have wound up here by chance. So, before I take you any further, I must ask you a number of questions. About what exactly the soul, body, and mind of Seimen Tsuchimikado are. Firstly, which curse echo represents the soul of Seimen Tsuchimikado? Beckoning light. Yes, that is exactly it. After his defeat at the hands of Ashino in the Hanjo incident, Seiman wandered about near Hanji. The form of his curse echo changed over time with the legend he left behind. This is the curse echo which was acquired by Mayu Shizawa, but when called forth by Seiman's body and mind, it appeared momentarily before him. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's why it was there that night. Let us continue. Who served as the self of Seimen Tsuchimikado? Who was his body, his ascendant who carried his blood in his veins? Freaking Shogo! Correct again. Although Shogo Oki was born to an ordinary family, the blood of a distant relative ran thick in his veins. In truth, the same is true for Yoko Fukunaga. She was also one who had the blood of a distant relative coursing through her. In her case, it was Ashino. Yep. Seimen and Ashino fated to meet again all these hundreds of years later. Now, for my final question. Who is the mind of Seimen Tsuchimikado? Tell me the name of the person whose consciousness was directly tied to this. This is so sick, dude. Nico B. <laughs> oh, I see. You believe it to be Nico B. Are you saying you believe it to be yourself? Are you certain? Yes, you are correct. Finally, you have remembered. That's right, you are. Seiman's Consciousness. Awoken by the curses and the rite of resurrection. However, having lost your memories, you forgot about the duty assigned to you. This is, if I may say so, where I played my part, guiding you through the events of this story. As your consciousness was all that was left of you, you manipulated time and space by way of the story chart, jumping from vessel to vessel and manipulated your host's actions by whispering commands into their ears. In doing so, you were able to get the full picture of what needed to be done. But, at one point, while still unconscious, you managed to remember your duty. The so-called mastermind behind these events, the one who awakened the right and the curses, was Yoko Fukunaga, descendant of Ashino herself. You unconsciously activated your curse and killed her. 
Yup. How interesting that she awakens Saman's consciousness at the same time as the curses. That was the one and only time she could have been stopped. Wow. Wow. So it turns out that was actually the better, that was actually the good ending. It was me going on my rampage. <laughs> That's so fucking crazy. The only time she could have been stopped was right there, huh? Wow. Holy fuck, man. So at that, at that moment, it was actually, it was. I, I essentially used the beckoning lights curse, which is deflecting her curse back. Ah, but due to your influence on Shogaoki's will, Yoko Fukunaga was brought back to life, using the story chart to undo her death. I led you to believe that it was the work of the Rite of Resurrection itself. But as it turns out, seeing what would transpire if the Mastermind was not killed at the outset is what ultimately revealed the way to put an end to the curses for good. Wait, hold on, let me read that again, what? Oh, do you influence the Shigo Shigoke's will? Yokonaga, yes, but the, Yoko Fukunaga was l essentially allowed to live, right? And that's a, that's after like I killed her, and then I came back and undid that work of the Rise of Resurrection, Rite of Resurrection itself. Yeah, wow. There were certain things which would have answered all your questions had you noticed them. For example, even while under your control, Shogokie willingly used his curse. When I asked you early on how many Shogo Okie had killed, this is what I meant. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I think that, I, I bet this is the only thing he's gonna point out though, right? M maybe, because I think he's gonna, he, this is probably a point where he would reveal something to me if I got it, if I said, if I got it wrong. Had you not used the curse, Shogo Okie would have done so of his own accord. Yep. For, furthermore, Maya Shizawa was able to recall information which only you knew. She was able to do this because she was connected to you through the curse echo, the beckoning light. Oh, that's true. She was able to recall information. That wasn't actually the case for a lot of other people. That didn't even occur to me, right? I mean, technically I did sort of control their actions a bit, but they didn't like remember all the shit that I had in my head. Like, she remembered that, because, like, the fax number and stuff. Oh! Wow. Yoko Fukunaga. Uh, let's see. Due to her ability to see things others cannot, ability to spur her abilities. This ability spurred her interest in the paranormal, which she continues to pursue to this day. She worked as a housekeeper. As she vowed to live a life true to herself and never change for the sake of others, Yoko has no regrets about the past she's taken. She's a dog. She knew Iba named Ogu Pogo. Here we go. In truth, Yoko is a descendant of Omiyoji who continues to practice in modern times. Her ancestor, Ashino, attempted to steal the Rite of Resurrection in Hanjo during the Edo period. Born with exceptional spirit sense, Yoko learned about her own ancestry while researching her roots, and was disappointed to find her bloodline had fallen into mediocrity. She became consumed with the ambition to restore her family's lost glory through her own powers, and devised a scheme to succeed where Ashino failed and performed the Rite of Resurrection. Yoko continued her training, developing her spirit spiritual and cursed powers until she discovered the Record of Fates, which offered clues regarding the rite. She plotted to use the curses of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo to gather a large number of soul dregs by calling forth curse echoes and setting the stage for mutual slaughter. The ultimate plan involved invoking a large-scale Feast of Shadows, awakening the curses, performing the rite herself, and bringing together enough soul dregs to revive Ashino. Since the effects of the curses increased the more people know and fear them, she first entrusted the Record of Fates to local historian Hideki Iraishi, who could be used to easily spread the rumors. She also contacted Fumichika Nejima, a criminal with a deep understanding of mystic arts who obtained the curse stones needed to gather soul dregs. Not surprisingly, Nejima was very interested in the story of Ashino and readily agreed to aid his revival. Oh my god. While carrying out these steps, Yoko... Oh, funny. <laughs> That's a, there's a typo right there. It's just Yuko. Y uh, Yoko learned of the existence of the Yin Scroll, which threatened to thwart her plans. She added a note about the scroll in the Record of Fates before giving it to Araishi, intending to acquire it before it could pose an issue. Through her investigations, Yoko discovered that Hajime Yashimi was a descendant of Seiman, and threatened him with a curse in an effort to scare him into revealing the whereabouts of the Yin Scroll. While Hajime bravely resisted Yoko's threats, she killed him with the curse to ensure Seiman's descendants would not stand in her way. Oh, interesting. What was the what was the curse that worked? Did I get was it like the foot washing one, maybe? 
potentially. Look at he like, cause he's like grabbing his heart like he had a heart attack. Or maybe it was something separate from the the curses of the seven mysteries of Hanjo. As the preparations were coming together, Yoko obtained the seemingly less dangerous curse stone of the Whispering Canal in order to become a curse bearer. A necessity for gathering the curse stones for the Feast of Shadows. Shogo Okie, also a descendant of Seimen, was eyed as a potential risk factor and contacted to ensure he would be located nearby and subject to monitoring. However, unaware that the spirit of Seimen would be awakened within Shogo as soon as she invoked the curse, Lyoko's plan was thwarted when she was immediately cursed to death by Seimen. Wow. Get fucked, Yoko, you dumb bitch. I do kind of hope she comes back from the dead just because I want to hear her. I, I don't know. I kind of want to, like, see her true colors, right? Actually, like, hear her, you know, say this shit. Now, allow me to ask you one last question. If you, knowing all that you know now, had the ability to resurrect one life, what would you do? I'd use it even if I had to sacrifice myself. I'd use it if it had to, if I had to sacrifice someone. I'd use it if it came at no cost. I wouldn't want it. Let someone else have it. I wouldn't want it. I would destroy it. Oh, -ho! I see. I see. That was Seaman's original intention. I apologize for leaving it out of the options when I first asked you this question. Now. It is time to bring things to a close. Interesting, I wonder what would have you pick one of the other ones, you know? You'd be like, ah, oh, maybe you were manipulated through the story or something, you know? Upon your arrival here, the rite of cleansing was activated, dispelling all other rituals and curses. Look upon the fruit of your efforts. And then we shall leave this world behind for good. Thank you, truly, for all the work you have done. <laughs> Sugar's was like, the fuck, bro? <laughs> That's what happened. I can't believe it. I finally understand. Yeah. I was the one that did that to Yoko. The blood of the Omiyoji that's inside me broke into my consciousness and gave me that curse. Yoko was after the Rite of Resurrection. She was the one who awakened the curses of the Seven Mysteries and cast the Feast of Shadows. And the only way to stop all of it was to put a stop to her here. Otherwise, the Rite of Cleansing might have been negated, too. Wonder how much of it was really her doing all those things. Yoko. Damn it, I didn't get laid! <laughs> Bad ending! Never mind, I'm going back! Back to the story chart, guys! Back to the goddamn story chart! Guess that explains why I felt like it was fate when this all started. Though she didn't seem to notice. I guess things were always destined to end like this. From the moment we met. I wish we could have met under different circumstances. No. No point in thinking like that now. God. I need a drink. <laughs> leave this dumb... <laughs> leave this dumb, her dumb life as body here. I'm thinking... A Moscow Mule. Or two. Or three. Damn, Moscow Mule is good. Maybe she just stays dead then, I guess. Yeah, I guess she does. That's just it. She's just... I thought it undid the curses, so I figured it would, uh... Might bring her back from the dead. Now, I guess I'll never actually see her, like, actual true colors. Just have to read it through in, uh... In the post-text. I, I suppose that's alright, you know? That's fine. Ma'am? What is it? Ah, just a dream. It seems that it was all just a dream. I dreamt that there was such a thing as the rite of resurrection. Just a dream. I'm sorry to say it, but there isn't. Right, of course not. But, even if there is no such thing, I promise you that I will get to the bottom of the kidnapping. In fact, I've happened to find a very important lead from over a year ago. Interesting. So I'm actually wondering, was I able to possess these, like, Haraway and Tesso and these other guys? Because were they also descendants of Saman? Is that why they were specifically people? I mean, technically Arreo as well. Or is it just me popping around in general? I, I don't know. Something that has evaded our reach until now. An eyewitness from the scene of the kidnapping. 
I see. Oh, and then that just will proceed. At some point, she will eventually learn, right? That's the point. She will eventually realize the truth of what happened to her son. Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! What the hell is this? The medical unit told me to get down here. What happened? And I came across her dumb body. As I was looking into Yashimi's death at the former Yasuda Gardens, another body was discovered at a different park in the area. Could they be related? Uh, sure looks like it, but... Hey, at least Tetsuo gets to fucking live, all right? He gets to live! Forensics agent, excuse me, we found this among the victim's belongings. Thought you'd want to know. Oh. Hmm? What's this? Oh, and they're going to find the... What? What the hell? Boss, look what was in the female victim's address book. Yashimi's phone number and photo. Wow. What? In the picture. There's an X drawn on it. And a bunch of weird symbols. In a hole where his heart would be. No. Do you think... I mean... Could this be some kind of curse or something? How many times do I have to tell you not to try to connect everything to the occult? Damn it. Is this a Nakagoshi case after all? Huh? What was that, boss? Yeah, don't worry about it. Make sure you uh, put that photo into evidence. There's no doubt this is related to Yashimi. Make sure you do a thorough sweep of the area. I'm gonna make a phone call. Got it. Leave it to me. Spend as long as you want on the phone. Uh, and this is before he, he learns about the paranormal affairs. Wow. Oh, and Yako look, here with her friend Mio to learn about what happened. Mio, turns out Miss Shio really did die in an accident. Yeah, if you ask around, might be able to get a little more information. I guess there never really was such a thing as the right of resurrection. But I did feel like there was a spirit watching over us. Aw. <laughs> Mr. H is just out here being a weirdo. Damn it, why? Nothing's happening. But now my contract won't be. No! I should never have believed in this blasted record of fates. What a bunch of loser. What kind of loser would be it, believe in this? I never believed in it. Nope. To all of you watching from far, far away, the right of resurrection has never existed. Not in any world, not in any time. So I ask you to take the life you hold and move boldly, boldly forward one step at a time. Oh, this guy's still alive? Richter, a lie is out. Do you want to question him? Hang on, Rayo. I want to get enough evidence for a search warrant. Let me go for now, and I'll follow him. That's the kidnapper. Oh, because that's right. Michio doesn't kill him. Yeah. Uh, yes, I I'm the one who did it. So please, help me. She, she's always following me. Oh, I'm so sorry, Miss You. I had no idea. What? Hotsuri was killed by this Yoko Fukunaga. How could that be? He was the kind of guy to just be picked off like that. You know that. Yeah, and Boss is hiding something. Hmm, there seems to be some kind of secret hidden in, Hajime, in the Hajime's family tree. Let me see if I can find out what it is. <laughs> this fucker. I had heard you would be absent today. Is there something you need? Well, I seem to have this spirit sense thing all of a sudden. I know it's the sort of thing our chairwoman doesn't approve of, so I thought I'd mention it. Uh, you could have called. Didn't think you were the standoffish type. I had to find out from Hawaii. Yep, sorry. I forgot all about my favorite chief inspector. The hell are you planning? 
Nothing so heinous as you're thinking. I'm only Makoto Yashimi after all. Nothing but a lowly janitor. How are things with you? Get along with your daughter. Oh, so the curse just kind of bring the worst out of him, essentially? Well, you know, more or less. It seems like maybe, yeah. Well, I mean, technically Yoko reached out to him, so clearly he was also banking on it, right? But nothing happened, so. His pro officer will finally fucking keep track of where he is. Fucking hell, dude. Fucking hell. Bravo, man. Bravo. So the huge team of people that put this shit together. What a just absolutely delightful fucking game this was. From beginning to end. Just fucking incredible. Made me feel like a goddamn genius. <laughs> Wow! Wow! I cannot believe how good this fucking game was! The sun dawns on a new day. Sorry, I'm just taking it all in. I'm letting the, I'm letting the, the brilliance of this game wash over me. Also, the music of this game too. I, I gotta, I gotta give it to the, 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 the whoever composed this soundtrack. Wonderful soundtrack. God damn, so good. This motherfucker better make another game. <laughs> I, I swear to God. This motherfucker better make another game. I hope it's... It'd be, it'd be great if it was another paranormal side game. But... Honestly, I'll go with anything this fuck th this motherfucker made. Makes me really hope that they honestly translate the, the games that he did up to this point. He made like 10 other games that were part of this long-running series that people also love. At least in Japan. This motherfucker right here. Takanari Ishiyama. I am a fan of you for life now, sir. Whatever the hell you make, I'll be there. I'm gonna be there, bro. Square Enix, I can't believe you finally did something right. I can't believe it. You finally did something right, you sacks of shit. End. God damn, dude. Fuck me. <laughs> Unbelievable. Boom. I did it. I did it. File 23, thank you for playing our game all the way to the very end. We look forward to the day we can present you with another Paranorma site. <gasps> Sincerely yours, Nakagoshi. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, yes. That's, that's what I want to hear, bitch. That's what I fucking want to hear. That's what I fucking want to hear. Another Paranorma. Yes. Oh, come on, baby. Let's do this. Let's make this shit a series. Please. I... I I would love it. Absolutely love it. Make the next one longer, too, please. This one was too short. It was too good. All right? It went by too fast. So is Nakagoshi supposed to be, like, literally the creator of the game or something? Like, it's actually the, the writer, the director himself? God damn. 
That's so cool. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that! Look at this shit. Then they filled in my name. They took it by the name of Nico B. That's right. That's right. Don't you fucking forget it, okay? Don't you fucking forget it. Wow. Did I get all the achievements? Actually, let me check here. Oh, I actually didn't. I'm missing four. What am, what am I missing here? Three hidden achievements. What the hell am I missing? Did I miss some deaths along the way? Maybe I did. I'm gonna check real quick because I don't want to. I've missed any endings. Oh, okay. One of them is the death at by Mr. Ereishi. Uh, so when I got captured, I don't know how. I don't think I even did anything there. So that he killed him on his own. Somehow you, you must be able to die there. Oh, and apparently for the another achievement, I have to when when he when the storyteller asked me how many people uh Shogo killed, I have to say five people to get the Who Done It achievement. What the fuck? Okay. And then finally, I'm missing Hanjo's biggest know-it-all. Oh, so and th those are gathered from files that you get. I'm, I must have... That's getting every file in the game, and I guess I must have missed one along the way. Good luck figuring out which one that is. Jesus Christ. I have, like, no way of knowing either. I don't know if there's, like, a... I don't think there's a complete list. This game's so, well, like, unknown. Oh, wait! Oh, hey, look! No, there's a question mark right there. Just one. I missed one. What the fuck is it? Okay, apparently... <laughs> the first there are actually some people online who actually provide some hints. I might be able to. I might be able to find it. Ishimi also looked at these students as a Sumida city officer. Yep, this is it. Juvenile linguistics has been a growing problem for years. The school is no exception. There it is. Just for the just for the to be complete here, right? We're gonna read this. Juvenile linguistics, the midpoint of the show era, marked, saw a marked increase in linguistics among young people. A wave of violent, violent incidents. Targeting teachers as well as students, and often involving weapons. Consume the nation's middle and high schools. Uh, Bosu Zoku motorcycle games also enjoyed their heyday around this time. Japanese arrest rates reached a historical peak during this period. In a pompadour Yankees and female Sukaban delinquents became a common sign on the streets. This youth rebellion is often framed as a reaction to universal education policy or the pressure of highly competitive entrance exams. But its causes are likely manifold, extending far beyond the deficiencies of the education system. Hey, and just like that, we got that achievement. Now, the funny thing is, I don't know, is there, is there even a way for me to trigger the thing where I ask uh, the narrator how people died? I don't know if I can, without starting a brand new game, at least. Oh, no, 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 I, I, I see. I was reading the, 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 someone's guide, and it was like, you didn't answer five. That's if I didn't press the button at all, it would've been five. But I pressed it every time except for once. So I essentially have to answer it correctly, but I didn't, and I, I'm not sure if I can get it again. Yeah, I think I might be screwed on that one. <laughs> oh, well. Just achievement hunting. Who gives a shit? All right, guys. Well, with that, <laughs> I'm sad to say we have reached the conclusion of Paranormal Side. I'm so sad because I just, I didn't want to end. But goddamn, dude. What a unfucking believable game this was. It's such a amazing story. Seriously, I loved every moment of this game. Every moment. I legitimately don't, I don't know if I have any criti critiques for this game. I like, I actually don't. Like, it was just fucking great. No characters were bad. All the dialogue was fantastic. I mean, I guess, I mean, because I have to be super nitpicky because there's like literally nothing else. There were a couple of typos, <laughs> which absolutely just ruined the experience for me. Fucking zero out of 10. It's like, that's like it. Like, really, I I cannot find a fault with this game. This game was just so, just wonderful and unique. So unique, right? Like, yeah, I mean, there's like aspects of like a zero escape or something in here, but God, all right, listen, this game is 100% fucking, this game is 100 times smarter than anything Uchikoshi has written. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna say it right now, okay? I love Uchikoshi and I love his crazy games. I really love zero escape, but this game is smarter than any of them. <laughs> and honestly, vastly better written. The dialogue in this game was so natural and just like not weird and cringy and unusual at times. It was so like just engaging from beginning to end. Wonderful music, art was fantastic. The portraits and stuff were so good. The way the camera like zoomed around and like kept moving. So it made scenes, even though they're just static images, feel more dynamic than they were, you know? So, God damn, like seriously, the, the, it's amazing that this is the guy that did the art for The World Ends With You, because he really like, like, I feel like stretched himself a bit with some of like, especially like Haraway's like fucking, you know, faces and stuff that she made, so she was like really like pissed or disgusted, and it's like, Jesus. 
or Nejima. Characters in this game were all just wonderful. All of them. I think my favorites, my favorite of voice was probably Tetsuo. I just loved voicing him. And I think he's a great character too. I think my favorite characters though, like overall were probably Mio, Areo, and Richter. They were great. But honestly, I, I loved all of them. You know, I think Haroe was awesome too. I did like Yako. Yeah, I think Yako was probably maybe the most simple of them, but she was nice. She was sweet. I did like her connection to her friend Mishio. And Mayu was also great, though granted, we didn't get, I feel like we didn't get quite as much time with her, but her introduction was so cool. The way this game had you solve its puzzles, too, were such, it was so fucking smart, man. It was so smart how it had you, like, literally using the game's functions, you know, to, to solve a lot of its issues, like churning down your, your, uh, your voice volume, right? And there's no voices in the game to get around the the foot washing mansion or how you ended up solving like its many mysteries. The fact that you had to put characters next to each other, right? In order to get the, to make the story proceed. Breaking out of the section with, uh, with Mayu down here out of, out of this room. And then how you ended up, you know, getting that information out of there through the fax machine and Haraway's side. It's like, my God, dude, so cool. So fucking cool. This game is so focused too. Like really, there's no like bloat at all. Like every scene felt like it was there for with a purpose. But I think the thing that, I, and then my, probably my biggest like just praise for this game is how much it left for us to figure out ourselves, you know? Like it really like gives you all the pieces that you need and it just gives it to you and lets you figure it out yourself. And not many games are willing to do that, right? A lot of games are, want you to see all the cool shit they did, you know? Like my cool story, I, you know, I can't expect the stupid player to figure this out. And that's what the, the final puzzle of the game is and why it's so brilliant. Actually, and again, it really did give me missed vibes. It's like, have you been paying attention? Do you realize now? Because that, that, that answer, that Hanjo incident in the, the order of events is literally like, once you have that understanding, it all starts to fall into place, right? And that's why, that's why that was the final puzzle. It didn't even actually ask you to get every event either. It just asked you to do five of them. Because they knew that some of those ones were a little vague, like the, the the singing girl or the dancing girl or whatever, and the guy that was on fire where it was sort of like, like it's sort of connected, but I'm not exactly sure how. And the whole thing with the narrator too, the storyteller being there to sort of like guide me along and help me find the answer, and then having him occasionally test me. Just the coolest goddamn setup. Holy shit. I really do hope that, that Square Enix fucking helps fund another one of these games. More of them. Give me more of these games, dude. We'll pre-order it the moment that shit fucking is green layer shown in any way. I'll eat on that. This game's a 10 out of 10 to me, dude. 11 out of 10. This game is one of the best games I played this year, and I've already played some insanely fucking good games. I, I, I definitely foresee this game being, at the very least, on my top five games of 2023. Now, will it be my number one? I, I'm not sure, right? There's still other games from this year, this year, and I still, I still have to consider it too, like comparing it to some of the other games I played this year, which have also been very good. But, dude, it, this game was wonderful, just absolute joy. I'm so glad, so glad it was recommended to me. Thank you. I guess like I was say, thanks to Airfan. This Airfan uh, was seemingly the one that also recommended 13 Sentinels. I don't know if it was just him or if it was also somebody else. That's what I was told about on uh, one of my streams. Hilariously enough was, yeah, the same person that recommended uh, 13 Sentinels to my mods and then who recommended it to me. Same person who recommended this game to my mods who then recommended it to me. So thank you, because this game was fucking amazing and I'm so glad I got to experience it. Truly a delightful game. But uh, guys, I hope that you guys all enjoyed this game as much as I did. Enjoy this Let's Play. If you did, please do leave a like and a favorite. Really, it really helps me out more than you know. And uh, subscribe if you're not already to become a picky penguin aboard the SLP where the days are always sunny and the vids are all always funny. Man. Oh, man, dude. Fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna be some I think about this game for a while, dude. Fuck me. I don't know what raincoat is gonna be like when we get around to it, but I will say it's gonna have a hard time topping this goddamn game right here. I tell you what, Bobby. Oh, that's a tough, that's gonna be a tough one to beat. But I am looking forward to checking that out when that comes out later in June. So we do have that to uh, look forward to down the line. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this just truly delightful Let's Play. 
And as always, Piggy Penguins, till next time, guys, stay classy.